Welcome to the Million Dollar Listening Podcast. In this show, we aim to help people grow in all areas of life with the focus of getting to the next level. I'm your host, Mari Wines, realtor, marketing guru, real estate coach, and co-owner of E3 Realty. All right, higher interest rates, higher levels of fear among the consumers. Welcome back to the show, Chris Ristu. Well, thank you for having me. Yes, we're going to talk about the most important thing that's going on in the industry, and it's the most boringest. So I apologize, but I'm going to keep it excited for you. So just stay <laughs> tuned. The data that you need, the understanding that you need about this market and what's going on is coming to you right now. I don't think it's boring. I think some people think it's boring. Well, if those are the people saying the market's going to crash and they're too scared to do anything in life, then they can yeah. keep thinking it's boring. But I think there's a lot of people that want to know the truth because they hear things from their uncle who bought a house 15 years ago or their friend who still rents or whatever it is about what's happening in the market. So I think there's people who will find it very, very interesting. I hope so because I think it's the most important thing for realtors to know. Yeah. I think it's one of the most important things for the consumers to know because if you do not know what's going on with the economics of – you know, in general, with the United States economics, world economics in general, um, what's happening, then you're kind of lost right now in this world of real estate because, um, you know, I think, you know, Broke Agent, hilarious, shout out to Broke Agent Media because he sent something out today which was a perfect quote. He says, buyers are 2008 buyers and our sellers are 2021 sellers, which basically means our buyers think the housing market is going to crash and then our sellers think they're going to get tons of money for their property again. And both of them are completely wrong. And they're so far away. That's like such a big and gap. And they're film. so far away that it's like, where where do you guys think this is actually going to happen? So, And I get it. As a buyer, I think in 2008, 2007, it's the last big wound of us of the real estate market, right? Um, and so that's what we know, right, for a lot of the buyers. A lot of the millennial buyers are coming up. That's what they remember, right? Um, and so a lot of people are worried about the housing market's going to crash, so why would I want to buy? And then you have sellers like, my house is beautiful. I spent all this time and energy in it, and I want to make as much money as possible because my retirement's coming, right? So you you have a far left and a far right, kind of like our politics, laugh out loud. Um, <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> right now, in our real estate market, right? I had to. It was it was there, right? Taking no offense to either side, just cracking jokes. But, so real quick, real quick. Yeah. Chris is the guy in our office. He is consistently studying the economy and the market, mm -hmm. and he educates all of the agents in our office as well as all of our clients mm -hmm. on the market and what's happening on a weekly basis so that everybody can make informed decisions, so that realtors can truly service their clients how they deserve to be serviced, and so that clients can truly make informed decisions. And so the last time you were here, interest rates had just begun to go up, and the market had <laughs> just, just begun to, to shift. Up. Oh, yeah, so, it's changed a lot. Being our economy guy, do you mm -hmm. want to give us kind of the most recent update? Um, I guess we can talk about, start with realtors, because the information trickles down from yeah. realtors to consumers. Okay. It should. Well, so, it should. Yes. As realtors. As realtors, it's your job to get the information to the consumers, not the news. So, Sorry, Larry. <laughs> I got yelled at by Larry just now looking at me. <laughs> All good. We like to have fun on. I had to. What is the most important update as far as the economy goes sure. that realtors should know? I'm going to give you, it's going to be a, a lot of different things. So I'll try to break this down as simple as possible. So what here, here's what I will tell to every single agent. And I'm going to go into only number one today. So Mari's going to have to invite me back for three more podcasts. But there's four things I tell. I'll try to get you on my schedule. You're trying to get me on her schedule. She's booked out, trust me, for months. <laughs> but four major things every realtor needs to be doing in their 2023 business plan. And it starts in this exact order and you cannot skip it. Not even one thing. Number one is know the data, which I'll dive in with you today, okay? You can't go on and move on to number two, number three, number four without knowing this because it's literally, it's like opening the sale of a process. You can't just go into probing without opening the sale, right? You can't just go into helping a consumer without knowing the data. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah, it's impossible. It's impossible. So as an expert and professional, you need to know the data. That's number one. Number two, you need to make sure that you are practicing your, your sales skills. And I'm not talking about sales skills as hard closing. I'm talking about when a client comes to you and says, how's the real estate market? What are you going to say, right? If you're just going to say, well, it's, you know, it's not how it was, 
well, they're not going to use you, <laughs> right? You better have something good to say there. Which part of the real estate market would you like to know more about? I know the news is saying that the market's going to crash, but to be honest with you, we're, we are seeing a little bit of markets changing. Some are going to see bigger changes than others, but what part of real estate would you like to know? If you need to be able to have that conversation and be confident with that conversation. So that's what I mean by sales skills, not hard selling somebody, but understanding how to communicate with the consumer. Then number three is you have to have your funnels built out. You have to know exactly how you're going to be getting your information out to people, whether it's open houses you're going to be working, whether it's uh, you know online lead generation, your sphere, your past clients, whatever it is for your, your funnels. You should probably have five to seven, by the way. And then number four, you got to shoot video content to the masses so everybody knows that you're knowledgeable what you're talking about. So four things, one, two, three, four, know the data, sales skills, prospecting funnels, and number four, shooting video content. So today's about number one, which I love. So I'm going to hit you on about five to six different major topics I think every realtor needs to know about inside and out. One's GDP, understanding what, you know, what is GDP? How does it affect us? We're in a recession. Our third quarter number just says we had a 2.6% positive GDP for our first number. You know, what does that mean, right? So number one, GDP. Number two, uh, your CPI numbers. Like what is the biggest problem we have in the United States is inflation, right? It's front and center. It's not Democratic Republicans. It's not November 8th election as much as people think it is. No, inflation is the number one problem in America right now, right? Period. That's for everybody. Don't care what side you're on, okay? No difference between CPI inflation and core inflation, taking out energy, taking out food costs, right? Knowing interest rates, what's going on with interest rates and having those professionals there to help guide you as a loan officer. You need a really good loan officer in your corner right now to be able to tell you what's going on with interest rates and what programs are out there, right? If you don't know all the first time buyer programs right now that are out there, then there's a problem. You should be working with a loan officer that is educating you on these things, educating your clients on these things, right? Uh, inventory levels, national, right? How many price reductions are you having? How many days on market are you seeing? Then you go into micro, right? Your cities that you service, Antioch has 245 listings currently on the market. You need to know that information. If you don't know your local market information, what are you doing right now? So I, what I like to tell agents all the time is like, look, you, you need to understand what is going on. You need to understand what recessions are. You need to know the last five or six recessions we've had as an economy and what the unemployment rates were. Like the one everybody talks about, which was, you know, 07, 08, right? The Great Recession, right? was a 9.7 unemployment rate. Does anybody know what unemployment rate is today? 3.5. All-time lows. Matter of fact, it's been between 3.5 and 3.7 all year. We have tons of jobs. Why do we have tons of jobs? We spent so much money during COVID, $6.7 trillion to keep the economy afloat. That's where inflation's coming from. Remember when they are giving out all those checks, right? And don't get me wrong, I know a lot of us needed the money and I completely get it, but now we're paying the price for that money, mm -hmm. right? And so these are the types of things that when we talk about knowing the data is you have to know the numbers. You need to know the CPI numbers every month. You need to know the employment numbers every month. GDP, most people don't know, there's three different times they come out. There's a first, a second, and a final. You need to know that. The first one's 2.6, just came out. That doesn't mean it's the final. Maybe the numbers changed, so it's 1.9. You need to be on top of that information to get out to the consumer. These are just some of the things in general that we teach our team on because we really truly believe that if you know the information on what's going on, you know where we were in the past, you know where we're kind of going, you can get a better idea of how the market's gonna react. Now, I don't have a crystal ball. Most people don't have a crystal ball. If you did have a crystal ball, please let me know the lottery tickets because I want to win the Powerball for $1 billion, please. I will give you $10 million. Thank you. Um, but that being said, nobody has a crystal ball, right? So we just got to take the information as professionals and understand it as much as we can. You have to know it. And if you don't understand it, I've gone, I go through it all the time with our team, right? Because I want to learn. I read articles. I watch YouTube videos. Um, I follow some, some, some economists on Twitter and I just get people's feedbacks. I read the comments. People are like, my wife's always like, what are you doing on your phone? I'm like, reading. And she's like, what are you reading? I'm like, trying to learn this, all right? You just got to take the time and energy to learn anything. And one of the best things of this current world we live in in 2022 is everything's at your fingertips. You don't have to, like, go to Google, search. I literally could spend 10 minutes and get all the numbers that you need for CPI, core inflation, GDP. Just go to Google, do your research, get, get to the websites you want to get to and grab the information and then read articles on it, understand it, right? Like, it's super powerful. And I think that if you don't understand that, it's going to be very hard to tell a buyer that, by the way, we're not going to have a 2008 crash again. 
right? Because we're not, right? And I can go over all those levels for you why, but just to give you a heads up, because I know that's probably going to be one of our questions, but that's down the road. Yeah, and I was going to add on to that for realtors. If you have clients who are selling right now, there's a lot of people who are kind of sitting back and waiting. But if people are selling right now, it's because they're in a position where they absolutely have to sell. And those aren't always – those are usually the most stressful positions Mm -hmm. sellers can be in, whether someone passes away, whether it's a divorce, whether it's they're retiring and that's their final property and they're moving out of state. But now more than ever, they deserve – to have this information so that they can make the most informed decision Mm -hmm. and it will make you or break you as a realtor because they are in this huge pivoting moment in their lives. Absolutely. And they are going to remember how Mm -hmm. you helped them or how you hurt them, how you were wrong because you didn't do the research and it will make or break you. You're going to get that testimonial and it's either going to be even when the market was down, I got the best service, the best education, or it's going to be like this person completely fucked me over and I lost my life savings. Absolutely. And, you know, I talked about the four things that you need to have in your business plan. I'm going to talk about the three things you need to have a master's degree in in this market. Right. One of them is the data. You need to know the data inside and out. Like, you know, I don't care what anybody tells you. You need to know inside about the local data, the national data for GDP, inventory levels, interest rates, uh, days on market. I mean, I can go on a list and list of all the KPIs that we have for the data, but you have to know it. Number one. Number two, you have to be a marketing genius. You overprice a home in this market or, or you don't do the right job and you miss something, guess what? The house with the train tracks behind there, uh, the house next to a school now, if there's an issue with the property, buyers are going to bypass it, right? Remember, the buyer pool has dropped off. I think we're at an uh, all-time low since 09, I believe, for uh, purchase applications right now. There's not a lot of buyers in the market, right? So if you get a buyer that comes to your house and there's something even smallly wrong, they're not going to buy your house. They're going to wait. They're right? able to be picky right They're now. able to be picky, right? And so number two, you have to be a, a marketing guru right Mm -hmm. you need to know marketing inside and out number three you better have a massive great negotiation skill sets because this is the time where you're gonna be eaten alive by an agent knows what they're doing like if you don't know how to negotiate in this current market you are not going to look good to your seller or buyer so tell you if you're on the other side of the transaction with me you're up for it have fun because it's 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 season it's eating season my clients are going to are going to win guarantee every single time whether you like it or not some people like well why would you say that to agents not going to accept your offers? They don't have much of an option. Yeah. They're going to accept my offer. our offering. clients, but the agents that we coach are always going to win too. So oh, agents that we coach. Our coach up against them. Yes, please, because I'm telling Stop you Stop right trying now. to punk them. Yeah, don't, don't try work. to punk us because you're getting punked back. Just to let you know <laughs> straight up, that's happening all the time. So just know that. And and that's not us being you know cocky or conceited. It's just you know we, we we spend the time. I come from a sales background. You come from a marketing background. I, you know I know the data. Like we're training our agents, especially on like how to get through this market because it's not going to be an easy market for the next eighteen to twenty four months. Yeah. So that was for realtors, mm-hmm. for consumers. My friends, consumers, I love them. <laughs> and when I say consumers, I mean buyers and sellers. Yeah. Investors, whoever buyers, needs to sellers, know. Buyers, sellers, investors, our friends, our family, know everybody else, yeah. What data is important for them to know so that they can make the most informed decisions? Well, I, I think it always comes down to understanding your why. Right? Why are you buying? Why are you selling? Right? It starts there, Right. Like you said, sometimes there's a divorce. And nobody wants to hear that. But that sometimes that happens, right? Um, you know, maybe there's a baby coming on the way and you need an extra bedroom, right? Maybe you got a job transfer you need to move for whatever selling reasons, right? But it, it starts with the why. I think if you put people first and you really dive into their why, why do they want to do this? I can tell you right now, we've in the last month and a half, have probably got five different buyers or sellers. We've talked them off the ledge of doing buying or selling, mm-hmm. right? Probably at least five. People are like, what are you doing? It's not good for them. Yeah. Like, it's not all about closing transactions. It's about relationships. It's about taking care of people's long-term investment, right? It's about being a trusted advisor. It's a trusted advisor, right? And so, like, absolutely, like, when we train our agents, you know, like, we're like, look, like, if it's not good for you or there's another idea. Uh, we had a client, funny, quick little story, a couple weeks ago, I'm – you know, divorce situation, I'll keep clients' names out of it, nobody's gonna know them, but just, you know, divorce situation, and ex-wife didn't want to uh, to let him in the house, he's been out of the house, this, that, and the other, and long story short, he's like, okay, I'm just gonna buy a house, I'm gonna take some money in retirement, I'm gonna do this, and hopefully we can sell at some point, blah, 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 we go through all the numbers with him. 
I talked to one of my other business partner, Michael. I'm like, hey man, like I don't know if this is the best thing for him. He goes, you know what? I don't think so either. I think the best thing to do is try to buy her out. He could keep the house and do this, that, and the other. And he goes, but you realize if I buy her out, I'm not re I'm not purchasing a house. I'm not doing a loan with you. And I'm not selling a house. So you got to make no money off of me. And I'm like, yeah, it's okay. That's that's the right thing for you. And so I think that you have to understand as an agent, as a professional, like I talked about knowing the data, have your sales skills dialed in, but it's also use the triangle of coherence that we live by. Like if it's good for the client, it's good for the company, it's good for the agent, then you make that decision. If it's that, if a decision is not good for the client, you don't force them into doing something. And I'll just give you a less intense example. I had yeah. a lady who wanted to list her house and she asked me about interest rates in the yeah. market. And should she wait? Is it better to sell in January? Mm -hmm. Is it better to sell now? Is it better to sell next year? And I had the dove into it just like you did. Yeah. And she's an elderly lady. Yeah. Her husband passed away. She's moving to Nevada. And I said, if you were to wait however long it was, is like the headache of you having to move by yourself in the winter in Nevada when it's snowing worth mm -hmm. 20,000, 30,000? What's it worth to you? Mm -hmm. And she discovered like, yeah, no, I've had a hard year. Yeah. I want this to be easy and that amount of money. She, she owns her house outright. Yeah. And so it was kind of just measuring What's more important to you? And sometimes it might be something as simple as that, but we know that we're, we're all going through hard times, like the straw that breaks the camel's back. Yes. If we can prevent it. If you can prevent it, that, that is your job. And so as far as it is, I always say figure out, figure out the why. And for buyers, listen, you have an amazing opportunity right now. Like in the last 10 years, you haven't had a chance where you can use first-time buyer programs. There hasn't been a chance where – you're not going to compete with three, four, five offers where sellers are going to not do anything. They don't care. You're going to need your own up against all cash offers. Like, listen, there's a really good opportunity for our buyers right now to get into a property. Now, look, I get it. Everybody thinks 07, 08 is going to happen again. I promise you when we talk through the data with you, you're going to see that that's not going to happen, right? And I'll give you some reasons for that for our buyers, right? Right now, we have 570,000 properties in the market as, an, as a nation, and we have 330 million people, guys. If we even get a 20% uptick in buyers, right, you're going to lose out on some of your negotiations, right? Buyers will come out in the market as soon as they get comfortable. November 8th elections, get through the new year. Okay, housing is definitely making some changes. It's starting to settle into places. Okay, wait a minute. We're not seeing these foreclosure market coming out. Do you know there's less than 1% foreclosures on the market? Right now, as a nation, we have a 20% loan to value. So I'll break that down for you. That basically means that Basically, as a nation, we have a 73% equity in our properties. Nobody's losing their houses. And I'll tell you why. If you lost what happened in 07, 08, which was the 19.7%, you still have 50% equity. Who's walking away from 50% equity? The reason why we had a foreclosure market in the past is they bought at a high. The houses went upside down. They were negative on money. You're not negative. You have tons of equity, right? So there's not a foreclosure market coming. And you don't buy a house as a primary residency to sell it tomorrow. You buy it to ride the wave. So if you have a job security and you feel comfortable in your job and your role at your position, right, you have decent to good credit, right, and let's say down payment is a little bit of an issue, you don't feel like you have enough down there, you should absolutely start the process. In my personal opinion, if you have job security, whether your credit's good or your down payment's not good, you should be talking to a loan officer and a realtor to figure out whether it's six months, a year, a two-year plan to get into a property because you're going to have one of the best opportunities in the next two to three years to buy a property. And you're going to kick yourself if you do not jump mm -hmm. at it in the next couple of years because 10 years down the road, and here's how I know this is going to happen for you guys. I bought my house in 2009 for $265,000. I gave, I put $8,000 down. The government gave me $18,000. I made ten grand to buy a house in 2009. My house has doubled since then. Actually, more yeah, than that. Yeah, it's more than doubled. More than doubled. I think it's tripled. It's probably yeah, near tripled. Correct. <laughs> so, um, so the reality of it is, is everybody was like, "You're crazy, no nine buying a house." No, I saw an opportunity, and then you have another opportunity right now where, if you're buying a house long term, you can ride out the wave, just like a stock market or a bond or anything that you're going to put your money in. You don't lose it or gain it until you sell it, right? So I would tell all of our buyers, don't be hesitant, get in the market, figure out what's happening. The, when the time is right and your why makes sense, that's when you do it. There's nothing any realtor is going to sell you on. There's nothing another loan officer is going to sell you on. Your why and timing are going to be the reasons why you should buy a home and you have a good two to three year window to do it. Yeah. And 
when interest rates were at their record lows oh. and people were saying, oh, you're getting free money. You're never going to have this opportunity to get yeah. free money. Right now, it's just as unique of an opportunity to get free money. Even my best friends, yeah. their renter, their landlord said, well, you got to get out by December. And I'm saying, you guys, we're going to get free down payment. We're going to get free closing costs. We're going to get free everything. Yeah. And I'm going to show you your numbers. Well, I'm going to have a loan an officer, officer show, show you, you your numbers for these high rates right mm-hmm. now. And you can look at the high payment you're going to have. And then I'm going to have them show you your numbers for when they do go down because mm-hmm. they are going to go down and you're going to be able to refi. So not only do you get free money now, yeah. you'll get free money then. Yeah. Yeah. And as long as you're comfortable with the payment now, that's yeah. the key. Like if you're comfortable with the 7% interest rate right now and you're like, look, this is the worst it's going to get. Because remember, you're locking in a 30-year fixed rate. This is the worst it's going to get. It can only get better. But what's on the other side of that for my best friends mm-hmm. who are looking for a rental at the same time? What are what, What's the data with rentals? Uh, rentals have actually climbed a lot. Uh, matter of fact, in June, uh, we had a 0.8% as a nation, which was the largest since 1989, I want to say. It's been a long time. Rentals have climbed. Now, they did settle out last month um, a little bit, but it's climbed for 30 plus years, guys. Like, rental markets are not going to change, and rent control is not the answer. You know, let me give you a perfect analogy of rent control and why renting is going to continue to climb. California has a cap of 10%, right? But the, technically, the rule is up to 10%, but it's basically. Inflation plus five percent. So technically, this year I can raise your rent. So if your rent is three thousand, I can raise it three hundred bucks. Next year, inflation going down. No, I can raise it another three hundred bucks or so, right? So the reality of it is, is every homeowner is going to do that within reason because they have the opportunity to do that because they took the risk of taking out a mortgage on a property and buying a house. We need renters to buy property so they don't be put in that position where a homeowner could just raise rents. I don't see rents coming down too crazy. They'll come down a little bit, I think, just just in general. But I mean that as like a more of a steady market instead of climbing as much. But you're going to have people that are going to be greedy landlords that are going to just use the inflation rules to use their rent controls to their advantage. And they're going to move rents up. So why put yourself in that position? That's the key. Don't yeah. put yourself in a position where you might have a greedy landlord that wants to take advantage of the of the rules. And to you, they're greedy, but they're not greedy. They took the risk and they bought the loan. They bought the house. They 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 did their part. So it's your time to do your part. And who knows how they're suffering on the other end from you inflation? Like I always say that you never know. I I'm a very great landlord, mm-hmm. and I will not do that to my renters. But if something happened in my life and I needed money, what would you? Where's go? the first place that I can get more money right away? Yeah. You would either sell a property or you would raise rents. You, would, you and that is your right as a, as a homeowner, as a mm-hmm. landlord. That is your right, right? And so, um, so as renters, we need affordable housing. We need more of it. We need more inventory, right? And even though you see like houses are sitting on the market more. Listen, if buyers came back in the market currently, even at a twenty percent to thirty percent of where they were last year, pricing would still continue to climb, right? Because there's only five hundred seventy thousand homes in the nation. That's nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. 2019, I think at this time we had about 900,000 homes. Right. So the reality of it is it's just we don't have enough supply to make a real real meltdown. Now, I know you're going to ask me this question, so I'll probably answer it now. Do I think there's going to be markets that are going to drop? Absolutely. I do think you're going to see markets that are going to drop. And I'll give you a couple different markets that um, in general I would see. I think Phoenix is going to see a big drop. Well, actually, it's already started. Um, Austin's mm-hmm. going to see a big drop. Awesome. Boise, Idaho is going to see a big drop. Uh, your second home communities will as well because people are being a little mm-hmm. bit more scared right now. Like Lake Ta- South Lake Tahoe would be another one. Joshua like, Tree. Joshua Tree would be another one. Yeah, we talked to an agent down there. He's like, oh, yeah, everybody tried to do Airbnbs here. They're losing it left and right, right? Like um, the reality of it is, is there's going to be markets that are going to have that happen. But as a country, I think we're still going to be pretty consistent. Like technically, you know, we're probably going to land somewhere this year. And listen, we were at a 20% pace, guys, in the beginning of the year. We'll probably land somewhere between 7 8%, I bet. Um, some projected 10 but I think we'll probably land somewhere between 7 8% if I was to bet this year. We didn't lose money this year, even though people, you know, maybe pricing's coming down and starting to settle a little bit. We still made 7 8% as a homeowner, mm-hmm. right? And I, you look at stock markets right now, people are losing 30% on, on – uh, on the NASDAQ and, and this, that, and the other, right? We're in a bear market on the Dow. And, you know, it's like, okay, I gained 8%, but I lost 30 here. Like, guys, listen, you got to have real estate in your portfolio. You mm-hmm. have to. Like, you just do. So. And then I love 
I, you said it earlier, but when you put money in the stock market, mm-hmm. you leave it in there and you wait for your investment yeah. to pay you back. And real estate is the it's same, same way. way. It's the exact same way. Like you don't, you know, you don't need to sell a house. Like I mean, I tell every every buyer, like I treat your you buying a home like me buying it. Like I know nine yeah. people thought I was crazy. I was like, no, listen, I'm just gonna ride it out. I was comfortable with my job. I was one of the top salespeople. I was one of the top managers in the company. They weren't gonna get rid of me. Like you know, you're you're the you're the you're the troop on the floor, right? You're the you're you know you're the troops. You're you're out there doing the work, right? They're not gonna get rid of you. So I was like, let me just buy a house. Let me go find somewhere. And like I said, I tripled the money on it. And I've not sold it, and I'm not planning on selling it. I'll turn it into an investment at some point, make some cash flow, and help a, help a renter out, and and do that. But you just have to understand, you're not losing money until you sell it. I bought my house in '09. It went down in 2010 a little bit, right? I was like, oh, it went down a little bit. Well, all right, well, it is what it is. But 2011, 12, 13 started kicking back up, right? I didn't lose anything, and I didn't gain anything. So to this day, technically, I haven't gained anything. I have equity in a property that I can tap into. Mm-hmm. So I tap into that equity. I haven't gained anything or I haven't lost anything. It's the exact same thing for stocks. It's the exact same thing. And you see people all the time go, eh, um, they put money in my retirement, my stock market. It's great. Do that. I have money in the stock market, mm-hmm. b- b- bond market, gold. I got, you know, I get it. But you need real estate to be part of your portfolio. You do. Not even just for primary, but even for investment. Like you should have multiple properties as part of your portfolio of real estate. Yeah. Speaking of stocks, many buyers, especially in our area, mm-hmm have their down payments in stocks. And so that's one of the reasons buyers are not buying also is because they just lost a ton of money yeah, in their I stocks. Get, which I get. But even for those who think that was your only option, please, please consult with a yes. loan officer about the first time home buyer programs yeah. because there's still money available. So if that's what's holding you back, mm-hmm. there's down payment programs. There's down payment programs to get you another property, right? So at the end of the day, especially now more than ever, get another property. Here's a perfect example, right? If the stock market, let's just say, was the same, let's just do the same thing, right? Let me give you, an, I'll give you a strategy for you, right? So you use down payment assistance, right? And there's different programs, guys, that we could do. I can get a loan officer on here to do all that with you if you want. But you got grant programs, you got programs that basically give you the money, and then they say you got to stay in the property for this amount of time. All right. So let's say let's do one of the programs, which is a five year program. Okay, let's just play devil's advocate here, right? So right now I can tell you I can get you down payment assistance, I can get you closing cost cover, I can get repairs on your property. Okay, this is the perfect analogy of what would happen right now. Mm-hmm. Let's say you buy the property today and it goes down five percent. Let's just say it goes down five percent. Okay. But in five years it goes up twenty percent. So you get your five percent back and it goes up twenty, you get twenty percent there. In that five years, the money that's in the stock market has now climbed back up to where it was. Okay, so if my money is where it was five years down the road when I wanted to buy, take that money out then, right, and use it as a principal reduction on your property. There's so many different options you have. Mm -hmm. Or do nothing at all. Leave the money in there. You got free money over here. Stay in your property. You have 20% equity. You're comfortable with your payment. Stay where you're at. You have so many options because people look at real estate as a now thing not the long term like look at it long term like you look at anybody who has had property for five to ten years they've all made more money like i just said a 20 percent loan to value as a nation guys that's 73 percent equity in the properties i'm pretty sure real estate is winning yes yes i think it's homeowners net worth is 80 percent higher yeah than renters and it's just not you just have the resources you have the resources and then just to give a little bit of evidence on what you're mm-hmm. saying we have a brand new agent who wrote her very first offer ever yeah. And got her clients twenty eight thousand oh, dollars. Her first offer ever. She and it appraised for more than they bought it for too. By the way, so they <laughs> walked into money and got twenty eight thousand dollars. Welcome to reality. Yeah, it's a great time to buy if you are comfortable with that payment right now. Did you say brand new agent? Yes. Yep, brand new agent. That's how the training very works over here. Very first offer. Very first offer. Just heads up. <laughs> so we've been talking about buyers, and the truth is, it depends on your why. Yeah. If you're comfortable with the payment. And even if you want to wait until interest rates go down, go get pre-approved now because yeah. people, when you are saying the market's going to crash, the market's going to crash, that's no excuse to not prepare yourself and your family so yeah. that you actually have a roadmap yep. because people have the wrong idea of what they need to do in order to buy a home one day. Mm-hmm. So get pre-approved. You'll see the numbers. You'll see what resources mm-hmm. you have. You don't have to buy a house. I, I've helped... I mean, just personally, I've probably helped 25, 30 people put plans together um, easily in the last 12 months. 
and we just work through it. Some mm-hmm. of them will be two years out, some yep. be three years out. Um, and they never feel any pressure from us. And then us. some are and like the following week, they're like, what? Let's go shopping. Well, yeah, some of them are the following week, but it all just depends on back to their why yeah. and back down to the right time. Mm-hmm. The why, the time. Those two things line up, then you do it. If it doesn't line up, you wait, right? But while we're waiting, let's get prepped. Okay, my credit score is 660. Well, can we get it to 760 in the next two years? Of the next year. Without having to pay a ton of money. Without having to pay a ton of money. If you actually get, get a your, plan. Yeah, can we get a credit? How can we get your credit score as high as possible so you can get the best interest rate at the time that you want to buy? If you're That's not a, buying for another two years, why aren't you working why on it? Why are you not working on it? Like, build that plan. It's okay. not hard either. It's not. These aren't difficult. Things. No, they're not. It's things. not difficult to do, number one. Number two, look, okay, I need to save up a little bit of money. Okay, well, how much do you need to save? If you have no idea of a target, how do you save to it? It's impossible. So all these things, guys, are just ways of first telling buyers in, in, in general, like, the opportunity's here. What are you going to do with it? Mm-hmm. Because three years down the road, you're going to sit back and kick yourself. Yes. So don't do that. Don't be that person like... I wish I would just listen to Mari and Chris on that podcast. They said just go get pre-approved. Just just go figure out what your options are because I think you'll be more amazed when it all makes sense for you. You'll be like, you know what? I'm not that far off, right? Talk about a confidence booster, right? Buy and at least ho- you'll be more informed. So then maybe you do get a raise. Maybe mm-hmm. you get a new job. Maybe rates drop and you're able to make a move right then and there because what happens is sometimes rates will go down and then people need to start the process and then they find out their credit then they find out their payment would be a thousand dollars less if their credit was up a certain amount so if you work on that now you're going to be in the best possible position whenever it's the best time for your life absolutely buyers buyers absolutely buyers sellers i was going to say let's switch it over to sellers. sellers okay should sellers wait until interest rates go down well, back to, to buy. I, I still think it comes back to the same thing we say for buyers. I mean, the, what's the why? Why you need to sell because of you know certain situations, right? Whether it's a job transfer, this, that, and the other. Um, what's the reason why you want to sell, right? Maybe for a lot of people, it's retirement. Mm-hmm. Sure, right? I mean, even if rates rates go down, are you going to make a ton of money down the road? Unless you're going to hold on to another five years, are you going to see a big big gains? Probably not, right? So. What is their why? You know, if it's, hey, I'm retiring, I can take all my cash on my property, I can go buy a piece of land and travel the world, I would do that yesterday, right? Um, so I think for sellers in general, and I think there's going to be a lot of this. And Now, a couple folds to just in general on the seller side, guys, there's not a lot of inventory in the market right now. There's yeah. just not. As much as it seems like there's a ton, there's still not a lot, right? But if you have extremely low interest rates or you have your house paid free and clear, right? You're not really worried about what's going on in the market, right? Like back to the whole thing of you as a seller, if I own my house right now free and clear and I have no why to move, I'm not putting my house on the market. There's nothing you're going to tell me. It's like, oh, I'm going to just, you know, that's a great idea, Chris. I'm going to take the <laughs> money out of here and go put it in the stock market. Like what are they going to do with the money, right? So as a seller, if you have a house paid free and clear or whatever the reasons are, just when the time is right, you get a hold of a professional, but you need to make sure that professional is really good at those three things. Like, honestly, there's no question. Like, if knowing the data, understanding the data, inside and out, macro, micro, um, marketing genius, and then also negotiating expert. Like, those are the three things that you would need in this current market to maximize your profits. So I think picking the right agent is the more, probably the most important thing we should be talking yeah. about in a, for a seller right now. Yeah. Uh, because in my mind, I think that's going to be the most important thing. Uh, for you to maximize that money. Because right now, there's a big difference between losing $28,000 on a property like our agent just got and also the house appraised for more. You didn't pick the right agent. (laughs) Okay? Then having an agent... And that's also the same person that tried to punk her that I was talking about. But who's punked? Oh, that's pretty funny. Um, (laughs) That's actually really funny. Uh, so, so you just got to make sure that, that those things are dialed in, right? And at the end of the day, that's super important, right? So you just got to make sure if you're selling a house, why are you selling a house? What are you doing with the proceeds of selling the house? And what is your, your goal? What's the end game for you, right? For some people, it's to get closer to their family. Listen, is ten thousand dollars going to make a break? Why mm-hmm. I want to move closer to my family? Probably not. I want to just move closer to my family, right? So you figure those things out. And if you can hold on to a property and hold on to it, then great. But if you need to sell because you want to get closer to the family, you want to move out of state, you got to move for a job, you just, for whatever reason, just get the right person to sell your house. That's the most important thing. And then also, I can't talk too much about this, but a huge thing to take into consideration mm-hmm. is capital gains taxes and that each person in the house has a yep. $250,000 Married write-off. couples, 500000 uh-huh. uh-huh. So if you're waiting for the market to go up, but you have this write-off, 
and you're going to make that much money, it's it's going to be a wash. Yeah. At the end of the day. And you always have CPAs, accountants, whoever who's going to help you out with that stuff. I mean. And realtors, you should have your go-to CPAs you that can help absolutely, your clients. Absolutely have your CPAs. Because that's that a them. huge part of their decision. Huge part. Huge part. So those are things in general that I would think are extremely important to know. And that's what I mean by hiring the best professional. Mm-hmm. Right now, you should interview multiple agents. Like I, I walk into a listing appointment. Listen, I'm going to come in. I'm going to do me. And I'm going to say everything that we need to be done. But I'm going to ask you, have you have you talked to other agents? Like, And I'm going to say you should. You yeah, should see a always. difference. You should see a difference, right? And I'm up against other agents on all of my listings. You should be, right? Like as a seller, you should mo- interview multiple agents. And if you're confident in what you do as a product and what you bring to the table, there should be no reason why you should hide from that. Like, you know, what do you experience, What do you want from a, a, a selling, uh, a listing agent? Like what's the most important thing that you want? Some of them might say communication. Some yeah. of them might say, I want to make as much money as possible. I need one that can negotiate better than anybody else. Some people say, I want a marketing genius to get my property out to as many people as possible, right? There's all these different things. You need to be asking your potential sellers those types of questions so they know they're hiring the right agent, for sure. So yeah, still no market crash? Uh, no, no, there won't be a market crash. There's not gonna be a 20% market crash. Like I said, I think there's a few things that we'd have to look into that are on the macro level um, of getting us into a, um, a market crash. Could it happen? Sure, but I don't see that happening. What I What I will tell you is, there's a few things I look at. One, inventory levels, right? They skyrocket, sure. That yeah. would make a big difference, right? But with interest rates for a lot of people at all-time lows and people have a lot of homes paid free and clear, I just don't see that happening. Yeah. I just I just don't. Now, I could be wrong, but I just don't think that's going to happen. Number two, interest rates climbing. Shocker, that's happened. We've doubled. Mm, still not doing terror now. It took our buyers out of the market, right? A lot of buyers out of the market, but... I don't think it's the make or break, right? Third one, stock market correction. That's happened. Still not happening, right? Fourth one, you know, a world event, right? A World War III could play some some role in here. Nobody was hoping for that. We're hoping we can stay away from that. Um, you know, so there's a few different things out there that I, that we look at in general, and we've got a few of those things already doubled, normal and we still don't have that happening and there's no foreclosure market coming because of what i just said with the inventory yeah. levels so i just no there's not will there be some markets sure you're gonna see five percent ten percent corrections and some you know at the worst you might get twenty percent um but i also think they'll rebound in the next five years yeah and of course we so, don't have a crystal ball don't. you are not a psychic I, i'd be winning the powerball <laughs> um when are experts predicting that interest rates may go down again and of course anything could happen between now and then yeah. so this is not a guarantee I mean, no but i but i have heard some predictions yeah no there's definitely some predictions out there and i'll tell you the wildest one that i've heard is the fourth quarter of this year yeah yeah um, i mean based on recent history it wouldn't mm-hmm. be shocking if the government did something crazy but our economy is just not in a position we just can't yeah. do it i mean fourth quarter this year first quarter next year i've heard is kind of the i guess the 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 most eager one um I think we're in an 18 to 24 month run here where I think because of the amount of money we put in the economy and I think just the way inflation has not really came down. And it's a few things that we look at with the inflation numbers. So just give you a little bit of background story there. Third quarter last year was the, the lowest part of inflation for us as a country. And the fourth quarter was the highest. So I'm really hoping to see the next couple months of numbers to see kind of where we're at. But if inflation is not getting under control by December of this year with with the interest rates, and those take time, guys. Those seven, 75 BIP interest rate hikes, they take time to kick in. If I was going to say, I would say earliest 12 months, I would say probably fall of next year at this point is probably the earliest you would see, you would see interest rates coming down. Just start to move a little. To move a little bit. And I would say worst case, two years probably. And I would say best case, six months or so. I'd say maybe April next year, you'll probably be the soonest. But if I was to put a number on it, I would think fall of next year, um, we would start to see things start to come down a little bit. You know, okay. and Who knows how much higher they're going to get either. They can so- get... I'm going to blink and fall is going to be here. Okay. I'm going to go to sleep tonight and fall is going to be here tomorrow. Yeah. So if that's the quickest case, even more so, everyone needs to start planning. 24 months, two years, that also goes by very fast. Very fast. This year's gone by fast. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. And so start planning now. Mm-hmm. You have two years. Absolutely. I think you have two years. It might be shorter. 
Could be shorter. But I would start now Mm -hmm. so that you are prepared in two years because like Chris said, 2026 will get here and the market will go up and we'll all be making money and people who didn't make moves are going to be regretting it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you don't want to regret it. You know, I I will be buying a house again in the next two years as an investment property for sure. So, yeah, I I mean, tell you right now, like, get in, buy, you will thank yourself five years down the road. I promise you. Chris and I are actually both Mm -hmm. somewhat in the market right now, Mm -hmm. fighting over the same exact criteria (laughs) for a property. But if the perfect property comes up for us, there's a good chance we might buy it. And we might say we'll have that high payment for two years at the most. Yeah, what's the worst or case scenario? Or whatever it is. Yeah, you know, you clear your debt, you know, you clear out your debt, you get things dialed in, you you play around, right? Like literally going through my expenses right now to figure out, okay, what can I cut out for the rest of this year, for next year? Okay, I can save that. Okay, cool. And you just work that in to figure out exactly like I'm doing the same thing that I tell you to do. It's the exact same thing. And we have all the resources mm-hmm. for anybody who needs help with this, these kind Absolutely. of things. Absolutely. We have all the resources you, you would need. Other professionals, financial management, budgeting, mm-hmm. CPAs. Yeah, you name it. We have them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, thanks for coming on. Thank you. I guess I have to have you on again soon for those other three bullet points for agents. Oh, yeah, for agents for sure. Absolutely. And then. And for all of our clients, friends and family, before the, you know, the new year, thank you. You know, um, I don't think we say it enough that the love and support and trust that you give us as a company and as as agents uh, means the world to us, especially to say that the market's changing. You know, we really, truly believe that our friends and family want us to succeed and we want you to succeed. So thank you. Thank well, you. Well, and also thank you just for the enjoyment yeah. of allowing us to work with Absolutely. you and seeing your families flourish and mm-hmm. move up and do what's best for your whys because that is what makes us happy. She's right. <laughs> All right. Well, see you next Thanks time. For me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, this is Jeff Mann, the owner of Elite Home Inspection. Please check out my podcast episode with Mary Wines from E3 Realty. You'll love it. 